just in your hand like this. So how would they have been used? It's more likely that those were set in some kind of a handle to make a compound tool, maybe something more like this. This is a, a series of small blades set into a handle for use as a knife. Yes, I think that would work. So you think that's how these stone tools are used then, as a, as a knife? Um, that's one possibility, um, and it's also possible they would have been used for hunting weapons. Kyle and his team have discovered you can make some lethal weapons with these bladelets. This one looks particularly vicious, I think. <laughs> this is one interpretation of how those small back blades might have been mounted. The advantage to this would be that there's these barbs that would prevent the tip from pulling out immediately um, and would it inflict a, a greater injury. So by 160,000 years ago, those early resourceful families seem to have colonized much of Africa. But what about the rest of the world? How did some of those ancient wanderers get out of Africa to become me and perhaps you? It's one of the most baffling mysteries of our origins. Africa south of the Sahara is cut off from the rest of the planet. To the west, south, and east, ocean. To the north, the vast deserts of the Sahara and Arabia. So could there be another way that people first appeared all over the world? Did they, as some are suggested, evolve separately on different continents? It's a huge question. A different branch of science is beginning to provide very surprising answers. To find out more, I've come to Cape Town. Cape Town today is a world city with representatives of just about every group and creed you can possibly imagine. And every single one of these people unknowingly carries inside them a story of their ancient ancestors. That's because buried in the genes of each of us is an indelible record of our past. By studying DNA from people all over the world, geneticists are piecing together that ancient story. Cape Town, a product of its colonial past, has citizens who bring their own genetic stories from every corner of the planet. And the minute differences in their DNA provide clues about the ancient migrations that led our species to colonize the world. Thanks again, folks, for coming. This is the tree of humanity. Okay, in terms Geneticist Raj Ramasar has used these differences to help build a global family tree by tracing genes down the female line. Our modern genes are the branches of the tree, and geneticists have followed them back in time to find our ancient roots. The DNA of everyone alive today fits somewhere on this tree although it's not always obvious exactly where you fit. So, Stephen, what about you? Where do you think your maternal heritage stems from? Probably southern Europe. Um, just the Italian community, that's where my family comes from. Well, actually, you are on a European branch, but you're on a European branch up here, and that's much more northern Europe. So I'm very sorry, Stephen, you're not Italian, you're a Laplander. <laughs> But follow the branches back to the beginning and the tree reveals that ultimately we all have our roots in the same place.
There's no question from the genetic data that is generated on the people here, as well as other studies that have been done, that humanity arose in Africa. And that's where the depth of this, this thick trunk illustrates where the majority of humanity can look for its roots. So because we originated in Africa, there's been more time for branches to develop here than there has been anywhere else. Yeah, that's a crucial point. Humanity has spent most of its life in Africa. I'm African. <laughs> yes, my cousin. We all are. <laughs> Absolutely. It's only more recently that we see this aspect of the tree. But the really amazing thing is what the tree tells us about those who left Africa. You might expect lots of branches, lots of genetic lineages leaving Africa at different times. But instead, the rest of the world connects back to Africa through one thin branch. What does that mean?